So I was asked in 2006 by a member of my little group if I wanted to support the Free Gaza movement. And I said, well, tell me about it. And they told me that uh, they were going to take a little fishing boat. In those days, they thought it was just going to be one to break the naval blockade of Gaza. And I laughed. I said, Israel is the fourth largest military power in the world. And you think you can break a naval blockade, which is run by warships, with a little fishing boat? You're going to sail this little fishing boat to Gaza? And I said, you're completely nuts. Well, they continued raising money and then they said, we've got a date, it's going to be August. They were going to sail in August. And I thought, oh shit, they're going through with this. So I was still worried about all these people doing this ridiculous, end of this ridiculous project of sailing a boat, a little fishing boat, past warships into Gaza. Um, but I said, OK, well, I'll do what I can. Well, off they went to Cyprus to prepare and do all their non-violence training and so on. And then I started to really worry. I thought, how many of my friends am I never going to see again? So by this time, I'd changed from, from contempt and cynicism to from Cyprus. He'd been doing support work for them and said, look, they want you to arrange a demonstration or a vigil. We are sailing on Friday, August the 22nd for Gaza. I thought, oh my God, the boat still hasn't been blown up and my friends are still in danger. So I was still thinking if it just gets blown up when nobody's on board, that'll be the end of that and they'll all come home. But no, they were actually setting a date now. But they're sailing their little fishing, if now two little fishing boats, they've gone up to two tiny little boats, you know, leaking and goodness knows what, off they were going to, to drown at sea, even if they didn't get as far as Gaza.